Kyle Larson wins, Joe Gibbs Racing implodes, and Kyle Busch gets chastained on the last lap at Sonoma. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove NASCAR at Sonoma Raceway. NASCAR has been racing in wine country since the Sears Point days, or Infineon. That's what I called it when I was a kid, not to date myself. Now it's Sonoma. We'll get to it in just a moment. First, I want to tell y'all about a special offer my friends at NASCAR Pole Position Magazine have. With Father's Day now less than a week away, when you gift dad an annual subscription to NASCAR Pole Position Magazine, you can also get his name on a real NASCAR race car. This is a pretty sweet deal, if you ask me. Again, here's what's included. A subscription, an annual subscription to NASCAR Pole Position, your name or your father's name on the back of an Xfinity Series car at Chicago, and you'll receive a printed hero card in the mail with your name on it. To sign up and give your dad an incredible Father's Day gift, you can click that top link down in the description below. Be sure to check that out. So much to get to today. We'll talk about the race winner here in just a few moments. We'll also look at some of the other top finishers, interesting storylines, how today's race impacted the playoff bubble. We'll also put this race on the groovy gauge at the end. May talk a little about Fox since this was their final broadcast of the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season, but I want to start with Joe Gibbs Racing. Today was an utter disaster for JGR. They got off on the wrong foot, lap two. Denny Hamlin blows a motor. That number 11 Camry ignites down the front straightaway. Did they take the 20s motor from last week and accidentally put it in the 11 for this week? How does this happen? Back-to-back -back massive engine failures for Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas, uh, something to watch out for as we head into the hot summer months, perhaps, uh, but that was just the start. Ty Gibbs, fresh off throwing a temper tantrum during yesterday's Xfinity Series race that took out his teammate Chandler Smith, gets into the inside wall in turn 11, destroys the right front, blows a tire, breaks a right front, crashes out. Finishing last and second to last today were both Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas. And finishing last on the lead lap was Martin Truex Jr., who had an absolute journey of an afternoon. Truex, the defending race winner, got to test on the newly repaved surface back in March. I figured he'd be one of the favorites, but early on this weekend, Truex struggled. 21st in qualifying, got spun out early in the race, today, then got doored in turn 11 when Josh Berry blew the corner, somehow escaped these incidents without significant damage, and somehow got his track position back and was leading this race briefly before getting passed by eventual race winner Kyle Larson. More on him in a moment. No harm there. Larson had 13 lap fresher tires, but then to add insult to it was already a dismal day for Joe Gibbs Racing, Martin Truex Jr. runs out of gas on the final lap and finishes 27th inching across the start finish line as fans in the stands sarcastically cheer him on. Utter disaster for Joe Gibbs Racing. Christopher Bell finished ninth. That's not too bad. We didn't talk about him much today. Honestly, that's a good thing compared to the fate that his teammates encountered. I want to focus on Truex for a moment because I do feel bad for him. Once he had the chance to show it, he showed us that he has the pace. He's a four-time Sonoma winner for a reason. He's really good here. Clearly a top five car, probably a top three car. Truex looking for his first win of the season. Martin Truex Jr. hasn't won a race since last July. It's been nearly a year. Combine that with all the recent questions he's getting asked. Hey, are you going to return next year? Is it time to hang it up? Is it time for you to retire? We know Joe Gibbs is pressuring Martin to make a decision. They've got to plan out their future. All of this tension bubbling behind the scenes, I was hoping Martin Truex Jr. could run top five, had a great day today at one of his best tracks, and that seemed to be happening until he ran out of gas, which, man. He wasn't the only driver to run out of gas. He was one of the first to make his final pit stop, but we also saw Kyle Busch, who pit the same lap, run out of fuel at the end as well. So you know, this wasn't exclusively a Truex James Small mistake, but it was a mistake nonetheless that cost him valuable points when Truex is still contending for the regular season championship. With Denny Hamlin blowing a motor, huge opportunity for Truex to maybe leapfrog at least one spot in the standings. Man, losing out on all those points at the end, killer. Moving on from Martin Truex Jr., and we will get to the race winner in just a moment, I promise. But while we're on the topic of missed opportunities, Kyle Busch entered this race 20 points out of the playoffs. He's a bubble driver. Every point makes all the difference. Kyle Busch was top five at Sonoma one year ago, perhaps had this race circled 
been a struggle recently. 27th, 15th, 35th, his last three finishes, we've seen him lash out against Ricky Stenhouse, Kyle Larson last week at Gateway. He crashed during a test at Indianapolis just a few days ago. Could today be the day that the ship got righted? that Kyle Busch and his team, Randall Burnett, they turned the corner and mounted a charge here in the summer towards the playoffs. Could today be the turning point? It actually looked like it was. Relatively quiet day for Kyle Busch, but he avoided much of the chaos and was running fifth in the closing laps. Keep in mind, he also earned some stage points in stage two, a top five, all things considered, great points day for Kyle Busch, who again, desperately needs it. Well, Kyle Busch got chastained on the final lap. There's no other way to say it. I know I've been hard on Kyle Busch the last few weeks, deservedly so, I believe, but today he got screwed. I was going to be very complimentary of Ross Chastain in today's video because, especially early on with all those restarts, he was making bold moves, gaining spots every restart, working his way towards lead. He was the show. Ross Chastain was fun to watch. He got a little too bold here on the final lap. Now, Fox naturally did not have a replay or at least did not show a replay before going off the air so nascar on their social media showed this in-car clip of the last lap chastain overcooking the corner getting into the eight spinning him around gosh chastain really wasn't even close to making that corner naturally i saw that chastain told prn that he just locked the wheels up didn't mean to get into Kyle Busch. I believe him. It was a mistake, but it was a typical aggressive Ross Chastain type mistake that cost Kyle Busch dearly. I know Busch eventually ran out of gas, so at the end of the day, did this spin ultimately ruin Busch's day, or would the failed fuel strategy have ruined his day? It's hard to say. Hard to say for sure, but for sure, we shouldn't just let Ross Chastain get away with this, right? Like, that was an egregious mistake on the final lap, and he hit a guy who cannot afford these kinds of issues. I feel for Kyle Busch. I really do. While I believe he has overreacted a couple times in recent weeks and has cost himself and his team by doing so, I do feel for him because he is a world-class athlete, one of the greatest, most talented race car drivers I've ever had the pleasure of seeing, and he's going through it right now. His car isn't resonating with him. His team obviously isn't as good as consistently as what he's been used to in the past. I feel for the guy. I want to see the best athletes in the world realize their potential. NASCAR is more fun when Kyle Busch is up front slicing and dicing regularly with the elite. He's not been doing that lately. Instead, he's looked like a shell of his former self. That's sad. That's depressing. That's disappointing. So I'm not happy to see Kyle Busch finish, what, 17th today with a top five car? That doesn't make me happy. I honestly feel for him because if he misses the playoffs this year, I think the playoffs are less for not having him. I want to see Kyle Busch contend for his third Cup Series championship. That's exciting. That's historic. Right now, that doesn't seem to be the direction things are going. Even when things are going well, finally, in a race for Kyle Busch, something or a couple of things go wrong on the final lap to hose him. Just completely screw him out of a respectable finish. Throwing points away. Now, one driver who got an awful lot of points back this week is our winner, Kyle Larson. And what I mean by that is, you know, five days ago, we were questioning whether Larson was even playoff eligible. NASCAR dragging out that waiver discussion for a week plus. Finally, this past Tuesday, we got an answer. Larson got all 17 or so of his playoff points back and added to his total today, getting his third victory of the season. He matches Denny Hamlin and William Byron, the three winningest drivers this year, all with three points paying victories apiece. And Kyle Larson had to work for it. Cliff Daniels gave him a great strategy, but it's the kind of strategy that only works when your car and driver are elite. And both were today. You look for reference, Chase Elliott on the same strategy, finished fourth. Ross Chastain just talked about him. Same strategy, finished fifth. Tyler Reddick, who I know, you know smoked the tires, maybe damaged his right front a bit. He finished eighth. Eighth, yes. Those are all drivers who ran up front. Reddick won a stage today, all really fast. Larson on the same strategy left them in the dust. So uh, kudos to Larson, kudos to Cliff Daniels, big win for the five team. This was Kyle Larson's first road course win since Watkins Glen in 2022. Congrats, congratulations, very well deserved. He had to chase down Martin Truex Jr., we already touched on him, and Chris Busher in the final stretch. Let me talk about Chris Busher for a moment. And actually at this point, let's just put up our top finishers. Chris Buescher isn't just knocking on the door of his first win of the season. He's got one of those like battering ram things. He is pounding on the door. Chris Buescher, it's kind of shocking, honestly, hasn't won a race since August of last year. 
It's been a while. He's been in the mix. Obviously, Kansas came up just short. Darlington got taken out of the lead late. We've seen his teammate Brad Keselowski top five week after week. Keselowski finished first, second, third the last three races and scored, what do you know, another top 10 today. Top 15, sorry, lucky number 13. Also, you know what? I should have thrown this graphic up earlier. Obviously, these results are unofficial, but this is showing Kyle Busch 12th instead of the 17th Fox shown. I don't know where Kyle Busch finished, so first report was 17th. I guess now I'm seeing 12th. Uh, still still not great. Should have been a top five. <laughs> Sorry, where was I? Chris Buescher, yeah, did not get the win, but still a strong points day. Another driver who needed it. He entered today 16th on the provisional playoff grid, only 10 points to the good. His rivals, Chase Briscoe, crashed out. Joey Logano, damage. Kyle Busch just talked about what happened to him. Chris Buescher, meanwhile, managed a top five, finished, and also won a stage. Played the strategy right, earned those 10 stage points, plus a playoff point in stage two. Genius play call, great execution. We know Buescher's a great race car driver, great road course racer, I should specify. He's finished like 11th or better in I don't know, like seven, eight, nine, ten straight road course. No, it's, it's something ridiculous. He is always in the top 10. He's just hasn't broken through to win yet. That's what I mean. He is slamming on that door. It's coming. It's coming. One of these days wasn't quite today. Still a valiant effort. Great finish. Great points day for the 17. Didn't mean to gloss over Michael McDowell, who charged hard there towards the end. He is a recent road course winner, winning at Indianapolis last year. He's not really in the points picture when it comes to the playoffs. Mikey needs to get a win. Came fairly close today. He was matching Larson in lap times those final few laps, just too little, too late, I suppose, but a strong result for McDowell. Of course, this is his final year with Front Row Motorsports. You always wonder if that lame duck status is going to hang over the team, affect their performance. Not today. Uh, credit to McDowell, Travis Peterson, really strong effort, second for the 34. Mentioned Chase Elliott, top five finish for him. Still looking for his first road course win in this new car, but he's always in the mix. Ross Chastain got into Kyle Busch at the end. That's a no-no. That was bad. That was egregious, but was really fun to watch the rest of the day. Good top five for him. AJ Allmendinger running a part-time schedule, sixth. Ryan Blaney finishes seventh. Good qualifying effort for both he and his Penske teammate, Joey Logano. Nice to see Blaney get a solid finish. Briefly mentioned Tyler Reddick earlier, I believe, but he scores an eighth. Reddick won the opening stage, looked to have the best car early on, but he got beat off of pit road by Larson and Chastain, I believe, about midway through this race, and they were battling hard for position when it looked like Larson kind of squeezed Reddick towards the dirt. Reddick hit the brakes a little hard, locked up the front tires, perhaps flat spotted them, perhaps damaged them. He did not pit for tires again the rest of this race, which was questionable. They tried fuel only, I believe, on their final green flag stop, which temporarily got them some track position, but they didn't have the pace to go up and catch Elliott or Chastain, finish top five. Still a top 10 for Reddick, but man, if that one cycle goes a little differently, he could have been in the top five with a lot of these others. Maybe didn't have Larson pace, but was close enough, should have maybe finished second, third, or fourth instead of eighth. Not bad, though, all things considered. Still got a playoff point out of the afternoon. A few quick shout-outs here. Top 10 for Todd Gilland. He was there all day long. Great day for Front Row Motorsports. You see Daniel Suarez, the 2022 Sonoma winner, with a solid top 15. A lot of Spire cars in the mix. A couple you don't quite see here. Zane Smith actually finished 16th. That's really good. 17th for Carson Hosevar. Both were top 20 all day long. Corey LaJoy with a really strong top 15 effort. Alex Bowman. Bowman finished 15th as well. He was top five, top 10 all day. He's a good road racer overall, but we especially know him for his success at Coda. I looked this up earlier. This is before today, but his average finish at Coda in the next gen is 3.0. His average finish everywhere else is like 15th, which, hey, well, what do you know? That's where he finished today. So I guess the numbers don't lie. It's true. William Byron finished 30th. I believe they broke a toe link during this crash where Josh Berry made a late block on Eric Jones and just plowed through half the field. Bowling ball Berry on that one. A tough break for some of the supercar guys. Uh, Cam Waters did not finish this race in the 60. Will Brown, really fast in practice on Friday, had an electrical issue in qualifying that carried over into the race today. He did not finish on the lead lap either. 31st for Will Brown, but there you go. There's a look at some 
some of your top finishers today, some worthy shout outs. Before we go, I want to take a quick look at the playoff standings and regular season standings post Sonoma. No surprise, Larson jumps back to the top of the regular season standings due to Hamlin and then Truex's misfortune. Chase Elliott, though, with a top five finish today is now second in the regular season standings. Quiet but consistent. That's been Chase all year. Hamlin drops to third. Truex drops to fifth. My goodness. And if we look at the playoff grid again, this doesn't factor in how many playoff points you'll earn from your regular season finish. This is just wins and stage wins. Those points being tabulated. Byron, Larson, Hamlin, three victories apiece. Chris Buescher jumps ahead of Bubba Wallace, puts the 23 now on the playoff cut line. Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Chase Briscoe, still the first three out. Little shuffling there, but there you go. Good look at the playoff grid post Sonoma. 10 races to go, I believe, if my math is correct, until the NASCAR playoffs begin. And now it's NBC slash USA's turn to broadcast the races. Quick thoughts on Fox. Uh, Kevin Harvick, solid. I think he's willing to call it like he sees it. He's not as afraid, I think, of hurting people's feelings. If someone makes a mistake on track, he'll call him out on it. He's not afraid to talk around the issue like other TV personalities are, so I respect that. Sometimes the chippiness between him and Boyer went a little too far. Sometimes even felt a little personal. Didn't always love that. The constant dunking on Boyer isn't super funny. It's like they're trying to be Shaq and Charles Barkley, you know, but this dynamic just doesn't work as well here. Mike Joy, he's lost a half a step perhaps, but he's still fantastic. A true student of the game, great historian, great voice. You'll hear him swap up names and make some small like, you know, errors here and there, but Mike Joy isn't really the problem. Really the booth by and large, not the big problem this year, in my opinion, with Fox. It's just the rest of their coverage, it doesn't feel like it's evolved. The bigger problems with Fox, I feel, are with the production, or should I say the direction specifically. Whoever is making the real-time decisions to cut between cameras, to follow the action, it's a tough job. It really is. I'm not saying it's easy. I couldn't do it, but whoever is doing it now, it just doesn't feel up to a high enough standard. Other things like typos, they'll get stats wrong, they'll get graphics wrong. Like there, there's just a lot of little attention to detail things that Fox is missing right now. And and that's really disheartening considering their reports, they're about to cut over a hundred NASCAR related jobs. Obviously NASCAR Race Hub is getting cut at the end of this next week. All of these mistakes, all of these shortcomings, all of these cuts, 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 and they just signed a seven-year extension with NASCAR, so we're stuck with them for nearly another decade. That, that's got me feeling some kind of way. That's why I criticize, not to try and pile on and put them down, but to just let them know that there are millions of fans depending on them every single week to watch their favorite sport. I don't have a choice. I couldn't you know, sign up and watch NBC's coverage today. They weren't covering it. I had to watch what Fox was putting out. And unfortunately, the, the, the product has been substandard much of the time. Technical glitches, graphical errors, badly timed camera cuts and shots, poorly mixed audio. Often feels like I'm just watching a cool, calm Sunday drive, drinking a beer with my buddies, you know, a little rough around the edges, rather than watching a high quality, world class sporting event, a tense, dangerous sporting event. I just think Fox's tone is out of date. That's just my take. Maybe you disagree. Maybe I'll have more thoughts on Fox later this week, just in the real time after the first 16, 17 races. That's how I feel. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let's put this race on the Groovy Gauge. The Groovy Gauge is powered by Electric E-Bikes. Head to electricebikes.com to learn more. I thought today's race was good. The first half was sluggish, was sloppy, kind of unfun. Plenty of twists and turns, I mean, literally and figuratively speaking, but we didn't really find a good rhythm until the second half of this race. And even the second half, despite, I don't think any cautions, the final 50 laps, I was engaged. I was invested seeing the different strategies play out, seeing Larson cycle out 11 seconds behind Chris Buescher, yet make all of that up in, what, less than 30 laps? Larson made his last pit stop, yeah, with 29 laps to go. So in less than 30 laps, Larson made up 11 seconds, was able to get by Truex, Buescher, win this race straight up. Like, that was fun. I like seeing extremely talented drivers do really hard things, it, you know, on the biggest stage. So, 
Overall, I'll give this race a 70%. Let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comment section below. That's the groovy gauge for you. That is gonna do it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR day in, day out, react to races, news, rumors, and so much more. And a huge thank you to my very generous Patreon supporters who go above and beyond to help keep this show growing. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, folks. I will catch you again later this week. Take care, y'all.